What is the difference between telehealth, telemedicine and teleconsultation? Telehealth is the, the use of electronic information and telecommunication technologies to support and promote long-distance clinical health care, patient and professional health-related education, public health and health administration. Telemedicine is defined by the World Health Organization, 2010, as the delivery of health care services, where distance is a critical factor, by all healthcare professionals using information and communication technologies for the exchange of valid information for diagnosis, treatment and prevention of disease and injuries, research and evaluation, and for the continuing education of healthcare providers, all in the interests of advancing the health of individuals and their communities. Teleconsultation refers to the consultation done through telecommunications with the purpose being diagnosis or treatment of a patient, with the sites being remote from patient or physician. Who can practice telemedicine in the Philippines? Any physician with a valid license from the Philippine Professional Regulation Commission PRC, can engage in telemedicine with patients physically residing in the Philippines. Is there a guideline for the use of telemedicine in the Philippines during the pandemic? Yes. It is stated in the Joint Memorandum Circular No. 2020-0001. The overall aim of this Joint Memorandum Circular is to enable patients to receive health services even while staying at home except for serious conditions, emergencies, or to avail of COVID-19 related health services as per standing protocols. Can telemedicine be a substitute for face-to-face -face consultation? Yes. Telemedicine services shall follow the standards of practice of medicine as defined under Republic Act No. 2382, its implementing rules and regulations, and other applicable policies and guidelines, taking into account the absence of physical contact. While telemedicine is encouraged, the gold standard for clinical care remains to be face-to-face -face consultation. How do I start my telemedicine consultation? First, you will be asked to agree and or sign a consent declaring that you have read the form and that have fully understood what was stated there. What are the contents of the consent form? In the consent form, it will be explained to you by your doctor that a video conferencing technology will be used to conduct a telemedicine consultation. During the teleconsultation, similar to the face-to-face -face consultation, you will be asked to give your history, share your laboratory test and imaging results and other documents pertinent to your concerns. Moreover, you may be asked to show certain body parts as may be considered important to form a diagnosis. This is in view of the fact that your doctor will not be in the same room as you are and would not be able to perform the necessary physical examination on you. You will be given the opportunity to ask and discuss it with your doctor. The risks and benefits of telemedicine consultation will also be stated there in a language that you can understand. What are the benefits and advantages of telemedicine? Through the use of telemedicine, you will obtain a medical evaluation and impression of your condition. You may receive guidance on monitoring your condition and the next steps to do should your condition change, specific prescription on what to take, instructions on what laboratory and imaging tests to do. It is also convenient to seek medical advice anytime, anywhere with only a few clicks. It provides better access to get medical care even if you live in far-flung places especially to persons with disabilities, bedridden individuals, and other patients that may require special and urgent care. It can be inexpensive because it's all online, consultation fees are rather cheaper compared to traditional checkups. It causes lesser anxiety especially this time of pandemic where you don't need to feel the dreaded anxiety of entering a hospital or clinic just for a consultation. It can develop better patient-doctor relationships because of the number of convenient ways patients can communicate with their doctors. What are the potential risks involved in telemedicine? There are potential risks in using this technology, including technical difficulties, interruptions, poor transmission of images leading to misdiagnosis and consequently mistreatment, no access to paper charts or medical records, delays and deficiencies due to malfunction of electronic equipment and software, unauthorized access leading to breach of data privacy and confidentiality. All consultations are considered confidential but given the nature of technology, you should understand that despite using appropriate measures, your doctor cannot guarantee the safety of your personal data from data hacking. Therefore you cannot hold your doctor liable for any data that may be lost, corrupted, destroyed or intercepted or the illegal use of your data arising from a breach in security. Aside from the doctor, who can access my personal data? Your personal data will be shared with the clinic or hospital staff of your doctor in order to facilitate scheduling of your consultation and for billing purposes. You may opt not to agree or not to record in video or audio format nor divulge the details of your consultation in compliance with the Data Privacy Act of 2012. 
What are my rights during telemedicine consultation? You have the right to 1. Ask non-medical staff to leave the telemedicine consultation room. 2. Terminate the telemedicine consultation and the physician-patient relationship at any time. 3. Obtain a copy of the information obtained and recorded during the telemedicine consultation. 4. Be assisted by a family member or caregiver in the setup of the telemedicine at home and to answer some questions. What are the limitations of telemedicine? The clarity of the images, audibility of the sound, the speed of the internet, the presence of background noise all affect the quality of the telemedicine consultation. Physical examination as done in the usual face-to-face -face consultation is not possible and is therefore a big limitation to the process of making a diagnosis. In case of an urgent concern, it is your doctor's responsibility to refer you to the nearest hospital in case he or she deems your concern to be urgent and would warrant immediate action and management by doctors. Your doctor's responsibility ends with the conclusion of the telemedicine consultation. Is telemedicine consultation free? Yes and no. There are telemedicine facilities slash providers or government institutions that provide telemedicine services for free. However, for private practicing doctors, each teleconsultation entails a professional fee. What are the available platforms for telemedicine in the Philippines? 1. Free social media platforms with video call like Messenger, Viber, WhatsApp, Telegram, WeChat etc. 2. Video conferencing applications like Zoom, Google Meet, GoToMeeting, Microsoft Teams. 3. Free service platforms like DocPH, Health, Now. 4. Do-it-yourself telemedicine practice. 5. Proprietary platforms both in mobile and desktop like SiriusMD, Medify, Aid, ConsultaMD, Talk2U, Easy Consult, Doxy.me, MedCheckEMR, Cloud. Thank you for watching my video. If you want to know more about telemedicine, please like and subscribe my channel.